الله عز وجل يجعلنا وإياكم من المستمعين للقول والمتبعين أحسنه إنه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه ثم ما بعد I would like to start with the words of Imam Ghazali رحمه الله عز وجل saying everybody can claim loving Allah but not everybody can provide a proof for it and they asked him what is the proof he said دوام ذكر الله يعني ongoingly doing the ذكر of Allah جل وعلا the ذكر of Allah القرآن is the biggest form of dhikr ever. And if you want to do dhikr in all its forms, then you need Kitab Allah Azza wa Jal. Durus like this are dhikr. Teaching is dhikr. Attending classes is dhikr. Doing good is dhikr. So anyway, I just want to say, the more you focus on the Book of Allah Jalla wa Ala, the more your love for Allah Jalla wa Ala will increase. In the Jami of Imam Suyuti, Allah wa Jalla, he said, if someone wants his love for Allah and his messenger to increase, let him read the Qur'an. Um, so that's a divine, prophetic methodology. You want your love for Allah and His Messenger to increase? Here. Kitabullah Azza wa Jal. So now, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So we see that a lot of these uh, chapters in the Qur'an, they start with al-huruf al-muqatta'ah. And these opening letters, the scholars have more than 27 different opinions about what they are, what they mean, what they serve for. And in reality, we are not going to explain all these 27 different opinions. I'm going to share one or two with you. That's it. Um, the first one, Barakallahu Fikum, is that these letters, Alif, Lam, Mim, they are like Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said himself, that they are, in Abdullah ibn Abbas, that they are, the letters or letters which stands for one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the alif would be for Allah, the lam for Latif, the m for Majid, and so much more. So this is one meaning. Uh, this is one reason they give. The second explanation they give to this is that the alif la mim, barakallahu fikum, that in reality it is Allah jalla wa ala challenging the Quraysh. Yani because they, these people, they were very strong at the Arabic language. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before each chapter or before some of the chapters, he, uh, he mentions what these words, they are part of the chapter of course, to tell the people of Quraysh, look, if you claim that the Qur'an is from a human being because it exists out of the letters of the alphabet, then why don't you come with the same? Because these Arabs, they were very strong at language. They were super strong at the, in the Arabic language. So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the chapter which is about to follow is yani, made out of these what? Not, not made, kalamullah, right? It is made out of what? Out of the letters of the alphabet. So why don't you come with the same? So that would be what Imam Sha'arawi rahimahullah refers to and also Imam Al-Razi rahimahullah in the first place refers to this. So it's just challenging. So every time the Quraysh would hear this, they would actually say like, okay, letters of the alphabet and we can't come with the same. Nobody ever tried to come with the Qur'an apart from Hussein Imat al-Kadhab and he was just, it was just a mockery. Al-Fil, Mal-Fil, Wa Ma'adraqim, Al-Fil, Yani Dhailuhu Tawil, Khurtumuhu Radhil, I don't know what he was saying. I don't want to know, I don't want to memorize it. So anyway, so we have Alif Lam Meem. Now, Barakallahu Fikum, something interesting is that in all cases where you find Alif Lam Meem or Kaf Ha Ya Ain Saad, Taha, and so forth, that there is always immediately a reference to the book of Allah Jalla wa Ala. Hamim wal kitab il mubin. Hamim tanzil al kitab. Nam kaf haya ayn sad. And then, dhikru. Yani, when the dhikr is the Quran. Nam. So you will find Yasin wal Qurani. Qaf wal Qurani. Noon wal Qalami. Yani, wa ma yasturun. So there is always a reference to a book. Yani, the book of Allah Jalla wa Ala in this case. So, Alif la mim. So the first thing here, Barakallahu Fikum, I want you to read the translation, um, Asim, of Dhalika, Dhalika al Kitab. How did they translate this? this yes, this. How did they translate it there? This. Okay. In the Arabic language, we have Al Ishara to Lil Ba'idi wal Ishara to Lil Qarib. We have that which points to something which is far away 
and that which points to something which is nearby. ذَلِكَ is الْإِشَارَةُ لِلْبَعِيدِ لَا لِلْقَرِيبِ يعني it means that, it doesn't mean this, to start with. So that, why does it refer to that? The Arabs would do this either because it is referring to something which has already been mentioned, so it has to do with going back in time, or either because something is of a high esteem, yani something is of a high status. So meaning that even though it might be near, it might be in our hands, but keep on saying that that is the book, not this. Because these are the words of Allah Jalla wa ala. So even though they are nearby, they are honored, they are high in status, and we respect them. Is that clear? So this is why even you see that some people call the king, for example, Janab, Jana, yani fi janabikum. Yani you see the word Janab, right? So in the Arabic language, Janab or Junub nam, refers to something which is far away. Like, and this is why someone who is in Janaba, now he's called being in Janaba because he's far away from things for which you are required to be in a spiritual, uh, sorry, ritual state. So he's called Junub, far away from what? From reading the Quran. Far away from what? From praying. Far away from doing Hajj. And so much more in that particular situation. So this is Janabikum. So you see that the Arabs would even talk to someone who's very close to them, but they would talk to him as he was far away from them. So the first thing we take away from this is we respect the Quran. And this is Dhalika. Another meaning which Imam Al Razi refers to, Yani Dhalika al Kitab, Yani that book which has been promised yani by Isa and by Musa and by all the other prophets that there will be a final prophet and a final prophet or a final Rasul comes with a book. So that book which has been promised is this book. Is that clear? So ذلك الكتاب yani the book that was mentioned to come or to be revealed is this book. Is that clear? Now here you see that الكتاب well, the Alif Lam Nam, has many meanings, but here it is def defined. It is defining that it is the book. There is no other book. When Imam Sibawi yani, wrote his book in grammar, he wasn't even able to give it a title. You know, he just wrote a book and people loved it so much that when it was finished, they started copying the book. And while he was still alive, people were reading the book and instead of giving it a title, they just said, what are you studying in grammar? They said, Al-Kitab. Al-Kitab, the book, not competing with the Qur'an, but the book in grammar. So, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَاب, the Alif Lam here, نعم, يعني everything, everything is contained within the book. Al-Kitab, it is the book for the scholars, it is the book for the scientists, it is a book for the socio, uh, how do you so, say that, sociologists, you say, نعم, and, and so much more. So, anthropologists and Whatever. So everything we need in the, is in the book. But now you say not everything is there. It doesn't teach us how to fly a plane. It doesn't teach us this. It doesn't teach us that. But we say that al-mabadi, meaning that the core fundamentals which are needed in our lives are mentioned here. One of them, we are in need of science. You find it in the Quran. We are in need of language. Allah speaks about the importance of language and that it's a God-given uh, yani, something. You want to talk about family, you find it in the Quran. You want to talk about war, you you, jihad, you find it in the Quran. You want to talk about inheritance, you find it in the Quran. You want to talk about anthropology and people living together in society, you find it in the Quran. You want to talk about the tangible life, you find it in the Quran. You want to talk about the unseen, you find it in the Quran. You want to talk about the individual Quran, society Quran, money Quran, zuhd Quran. It is strange that all the opposites can be combined in one book. Usually when you talk about the importance of money, you have one book. You talk about the danger of money, you put it in another book. You talk about peace, it is in one book. You talk about war, it's in another. But in the Quran, Allah in 604 pages, He mentioned everything together without there being any lack of harmony. <laughs> this is so strange. Well, if it were from somebody else apart from Allah, then they would have found many flaws in it. But who is able to talk about these big issues and mention them all together in one book, which is concise, but nevertheless, everything we need. 
So this is why ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ This is the book you need. Not meaning you don't need another book. You might need other books. But these books are no more than something which is built on this book. It is the fundamental, it is the core of everything we need. Like now today, people are talking about psychology and frameworks and, 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 and theories. When we are going to look at Kitab, we are going to look at Sunnah, we're going to see that we find that within Kitab or Sunnah, these things that are giving a name now, and they were present but without that name. That's the only thing. Like the psychology, psychological approaches of the Prophet ﷺ, if you were to look at them, they still have to what? They still have to discover some of the, the, the what? The methodologies he used وسلم. Anyway, ذلك الكتاب. So we have الكتاب, yani it is everything you need. Also meaning that whatever you do, look at the book first. And if you then see that that which you want to do goes against the core message of the book, don't do it. Because everything should be built on it and it is built on nothing. Meaning it is built on nothing, yani it is never secondary. Naam? It is not a fara, it's a asal. ذلك الكتاب. Now we have here, if you take your Quran, where do you see the word fi? You see that the word fi is between this, isn't it? Naam? And this is what we call a ta'anuq. This is a ta'anuq. In Tajweed, we call this a ta'anuq. So now meaning that you are allowed to stop before it, you are to allowed to stop in between it, or you are uh, allowed to continue reading. So we can go, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ We can go, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ we can go, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ there are three ways that we can do it. But these three ways all give a different meaning. These three things that have a different meaning. So when I say, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبُ That is the book without any doubt. Yani, that is the book. The book they were referring to is this book, the Qur'an, without any doubt. If we say, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ That is the book. And therein is nothing that should make you doubt. There are no contradictions. Naam? There is nothing. Or, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَقِينَ That is the book and without any doubt, it, therein is guidance for the mutaqeen. You see, so there are three different things being told here. So either is that is the book that has been promised and there is no doubt about that. Or this is the book and you shouldn't doubt about anything within the book. Or that is the book and you should not doubt that it is a guidance for the mutaqeen. So how can Allah Jalla wa'ala say all these three things or, or uh, yani, share all these three meanings with us at once? It's kalamullah. Now it's kalamullah, he laysa bi makhluq. Allah Jalla wa'ala, yani, when we go through the book of Allah, you will be astonished the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to us. And yani, he speaks to us yani, in the most eloquent of languages and in the most eloquent of ways. And every letter has a meaning. Every order has a meaning. Every order of words has a meaning. And sometimes you can find one word in an ayah and then a second word. And then in another ayah, the first word here is the second word there. there and the second word there is the first word here. And why is that? That's for a reason. And all of this we will see. And this is what we call yani, al-bayan al al-qur'ani. We will have a look at that. So, so the first thing we take away from this barakallahu fikum is that one is not allowed to doubt anything which is in the Quran. Especially in a time where people, like yesterday, um, subhanallah, we went, I, I went with my wife to a place because due to my uh, diabetes, my, my face sometimes, it's very strange, I need to they need to massage this, right? So, uh, a man, of course. So we went there, and then she said, my wife asked, do they have something for men? They said, no, we are no longer allowed to, to give gender-linked massages. It's a neutral one. I told the, the person, I said, I'm not neutral. <laughs> I, I'm neutral when I, I say they are the same. 
I'm not, they're not the same, they're different. My face is different, isn't it? He said, I can't, I can't get into the details. I said, why? It's not a detail. I'm a man, my wife is a woman. I want a massage for a man. And he says, no, it's, it's all neutral, gender neutral. So this is very strange. Like, like in Belgium, you know, on, on, on a product which is typical for women, they had this sign. And then you had people who are transgender, and I respect them as people, but I don't agree with their choice. So here, yeah, they said, we don't want this anymore. This is discriminating. It is something only women need to buy. You know what I mean? But nevertheless, they said, no, we need a neutral symbol. They, now for us, we are still in shock. Oh, what's that neutral thing? But the, for the next generation, it will be normal. It will be normal. And those who are the majority, man, woman, they are the one that need, need that will that, that are being looked at as being strange. Like, is there something for men? No, it's gender neutral. But nobody's born gender neutral. We are all man, a man or a woman. So anyway, when we see these things happening, we respect people, and I can disagree with people. I don't agree. I don't agree with homosexuality. Do you have a problem with that? I don't. But I will respect him. I will, I, I will treat him like I treat anybody else. But according to me, it's a sin. And, and I don't shy away to say this. The problem is now that we as Muslims, we start shying away. Why? Because when you say these things, very quickly they will say, tell you that you, are, that you are discriminating. That you are radical in your thoughts. You are not. You are allowed to disagree with people. That's not against the law. You are not allowed to discriminate them. And we are not doing that. We're just saying that's a sin. Well, I, I'm against Zina as well. Do you have a problem with that? You understand what I mean? So now, Today, the biggest challenge for the Muslims is not to doubt their religion. That's the biggest challenge today, is that you don't doubt your religion and your mabadi ad yani which are the ethics and the values of your religion. Hold them high because only the Creator knows what His creation needs. Nobody else. And doesn't He who know, He who has created, doesn't He know the details of all things? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will see that the people who go against the teachings of their Creator eventually will end up understanding that their choice was a wrong choice. So we are never going to doubt our book. Never. Then it says, Hudan lil mutaqeen. Now you see here, Hudan, yani it is undefined. Naam? ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ يعني فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Therein is guidance, a guidance. But when something is undefined, in this sen sentence structure, it entails everything. Meaning that it is a detail in the slightest matters, of, of a guidance in the tiniest matters of their life. Like, it is a huda in everything we need. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ used to ask Allah Jalla wa ala to make a choice for him on his behalf in Salat al-Istikhara. Fi dini, yani, uh, uh, wa ma'ashi wa akhibati amri. In my deen, in my life, livelihood, and in my akhirah. The Qur'an in the Qur'an is everything. Everything we need. And this is why we look at the ruh of the Qur'an as being the general teachings of the Islam, yani, but we will get to that later. Hudan al-Muttaqeen. Then al-Muttaqeen, who are the Muttaqoon? Yani, the Muttaqoon, in the Arabic language, a taqwa means shielding yourself. Yani, a taqwa is a shield. It's a wiqaya. So they say taqwa, like uh, uh, he said, is that you place between you and hellfire and the anger of Allah a shield made out of good deeds and supplications. You place between yourself and Allah's anger a shield made out of, not made out of iron, but a shield made out of good deeds and supplications to protect you against Allah's anger and to protect you against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hellfire. And Imam Ibn Rajab rahmatullah alayhi Yani he said, إِنَّمَا سَمَّ اللَّهُ الْمُتَّقِينَ بِمُتَّقِينَ لِأَنَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ مَا لَا يُتَّقَى مَخَافَةَ أَنْ يَقَعُوا فِي الْحَرَامِ The only reason why Allah called muttaqin muttaqin because they يَتَّقُونَ because they shield themselves 
against that which one shouldn't shield himself against because they are free to end up in haram. Meaning, so if this is the meaning of taqwa, it actually means that the more taqwa you have, the more hidayah you will find in kitabillah. So the more taqwa you have, the more you stay away, not only from haram, but the more you stay away from haram and doubtful matters, the more your soul will be enlightened and the more you will find guidance in the book of Allah Jalla wa ala. So if you look at these scholars, like Imam Sha'arawi, my preferred mufassir ever, very strange, because he died, you know, the last century, rahmatullahi alayhi. So, but when I look at his tafsir, it is God, it, it's it inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how I look at it. And why is this? Because they used to purify their souls. And this is the same with these mufassirin. If you look at Imam al-Razi, you look at everything, everything he deducts from the words of Allah, then you say this is through the soul. Because the connection to the Quran doesn't happen just with the mind, nor with the emotions, not with the five senses, because it is being connected to the Creator. And this is not with the five senses. Being connected to the Creator is with the soul. That's the only connection. We don't connect to Allah with our minds. We connect to aqidah, to have a correct belief in Allah. No? We don't connect to Allah with our emotions. That's a result of something. But we connect to Allah with our souls. Is that clear? So the purer your soul is, the more you will stay away from haram and doubtful matters, and the more hidayah you will have from the book of Allah. And this is why on your path in tafsir, to understanding the book of Allah Jalla wa'ala, you need to oblige yourself to stay away from haram as much as you can. Because one haram, while you are studying tafsir, will take you away from a correct comprehension. Because Allah doesn't allow for the meanings of his words to be sent down upon a heart which goes against its meanings. That, that doesn't exist. So, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا للمتقين. Is that clear? So, these are the three meanings. We know what this is. The Alif la Mim. So, here we have, in Alif la Mim, we have one qari who doesn't read Alif la, sorry, Alif la Mim. He would read Alif la Mim. It's for you to find out who reads like this. Don't tell me if you know. So that's another qari. The difference in ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه is here. Like Ibn Kathir would prolong it. If we read it in Hafs and all the other Qira'at, we are going to read ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Ibn Kathir reads ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ You heard the difference? فِيهِ هُدًا Instead of فِيهِ هُدًا Then we have here Al-Imala, if we stop on it ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا فِيهِ هُدَى فِيهِ هُدَى فِيهِ هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Then we have the tanween into the lam. Some of them would do idgham bi ghunna. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Some would do only one count. فِيهِ هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ So there are the different ways to, to read it. Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> so I'm not... A Christian. What is on the side? Okay. Now, what what is the next verse? Al Ladina. Al Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> no, no, I won't. Al Ladina yuminuna bil ghaybi wa yuqimuna. وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ أَنْ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ <coughs> Yes, very good. Okay, so here, Barakallahu Fikum, the easiest way Imam al-Razi chooses for, um, and he mentions a lot of opinions, is الَّذِينَ is referring to what? المتقين. Sorry. So back to the first 
Yes, Alladina. Yani, Ya'udu ila aqrab il mathkur. Yeah? So, this is Alladina. So, the Muttaqeen. Who are the Muttaqoon? They are those who believe in the unseen, who establish prayer, and who give away of the, something of that which have, we have provided them with. So, but the, all of this is in need of a what? Of an explanation. Because it doesn't just refer to the muttaqin. It refers in the first place to those who don't doubt the book of Allah. Meaning that the stronger you are in these things, yani in imanun bil ghayb, in iqamatu salah, and in giving away in charity, the stronger your heart will be, and the stronger you will believe in the book of Allah Jalla wa ala, and the more you will take away from it, and it's a vicious circle. So at the end, and this will then once again increase your salah, <coughs> increase your iman, and increase in giving away. Also, that if you want to understand the Quran, then you need to strengthen your iman in al-ghayb. Now this is the understanding of the Quran. You need to what? Beautify your prayers, strengthen your prayers. And you need to spend away in charity. Some say you need to do all three of them. Others say you need to look at this which is the most difficult for you apart from that one. Is it iqamatu salah or giving away money? Like if you say prayer is not difficult upon me, but giving away in charity is difficult, then your understanding of the Quran might increase by giving away in charity. Is that clear? So, alladhina yu'minun. Yani yu'minun has many, uh, many meanings. Naam. Some say it's from Al-Aman, and Al-Aman is feeling safe, meaning that you come at rest, yani that you have no doubt whatsoever, you don't go left, you don't go right, you feel in your safe zone, it is natural to you. No? So, Alladheena Yu'minun, and some say Yu'minun uh, comes from Yusaddiqun, they testify that it is true. Naam. So this is why uh, the, the, the children of Yaqub, when they came back, they said, وَمَا أَنْتَ بِمُؤْمِنٍ لَنَا أَيْ بِمُصَدِّقٍ لَنَا the, the children of Yaqub, when they came back and they left Yusuf behind, السلام, they said, and you are not a mu'min in us. Meaning you don't affirm the fact that you believe that what we are saying is true. So the mu'minun are those who testify that that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa say is true. So that's one of the meanings. So just believing is okay, but it's not 100% correct. So, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ The ghayb, barakallahu fikum, yani, some said al-ghayb is um, Allah. Naam? Allah is al-ghayb. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, will never, uh, anyway, some say it's, it's Allah. Then the second one they say, it is everything which is not seen. But eventually, that which is unseen will become seen. Isn't it? So this is why they say there are three kinds of knowledge. Three kinds of sciences. Two will disappear, one will remain. We study, we study Islam, we study Iman, and we study Ihsan. We study Islam, yani salah, sawm, zakah, hajj. We won't need that in paradise. We don't take that with us to the hereafter. We are in need of Iman, a correct aqidah. Naam, sifat, salbiya, and so forth. We study this, but into a hereafter, we're not in need of that theory. So the ilm of Islam and the ilm of Iman will disappear, but the ilm of Ihsan is the only one which will remain. We take the ilm, the knowledge of Ihsan, towards the hereafter. Because in the hereafter, they say, yani, Allah, the ilm of Ihsan is that you worship Allah as if you see Him. And in the hereafter, we will see Him. So Al-Ihsan is the only knowledge we will take with us to the hereafter. Because in the hereafter, no zakat, no siyam, no sujood, no aqidah. So Al-Ladheena yu'minuna bil ghaybi wa yuqimuna salata wa mimma razaqnaahum yunfiqoon. So here the, the, the question is, yani, is the order meant? What do I mean? Is there an order or is it just al-jama'ah? Gathering different things to mention them together. Not because the one gets priority over the other. They say no. Because first you need to have iman bil ghayb. And if you have iman bil ghayb, then your first ob obligation is what? Salah. Because you don't have to pay zakat immediately, don't you? When I become a Muslim now, then only I start from counting now. 
and a year later I will pay my zakat. I will not immediately pay zakat. So now first I need to have iman al ghayb then there is prayer, and then there is zakat. And very often zakat and salah are mentioned together in the Qur'an. And this is why one of the opinions is, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Yani is what is about zakat, and is not about charity. The reason why, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِمَّا Which refers to a small part of something. Na? Allah said, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ Of what, what we have provided them with. And they say the reason why Allah reminds us that He provided us, yani, means that it's His money. And where does it show that the money is His money? When we have to pay zakat. Because when we pay zakat, it's because it is Allah's money. We don't have a haq on that money, it's Allah's. So they say, وَمِمَّا a part of it, yani the two and a half percent, رَزَقْنَاهُمْ that which is still ours, which we gave them, يُنْفِقُونَ yani they spend from it. Is that clear? So this is one of the reasons why they say it is referring to zakat and not referring to, to sadaqah. Some say no, it refers to both. Yani it is referring to zakat and it is referring to sadaqah. Then our scholars mention here, that one should not give away in charity if one has to pay back a debt. Like some would even go as far as to say, if you spend in charity while you still owe somebody money, that your charity will not be accepted. This is if your deen is mu'ajjal. Now meaning that the person is waiting for his money. He's saying, as soon as you can, give me my money back. Then, whenever you give away in charity, that would be, according to some, considered to be a sin. Because that money is not yours. Because his haq that you agree to is as soon as you can. You see? But if now you pay it in installments, and he says you pay me every month, a month 50 pounds, as even if you're a millionaire, now you be, all of a sudden you, you turn into a millionaire, and then even if you only give 50 pounds a month, that would be okay. And you can spend in charity as much as you like. And that's the same with qada, right? You don't perform extra prayers if you still have to make up your fart prayers. Is that clear for everybody? So, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ But now, some of the scholars, yani of the ruh, they said, غَيْب is but a word. They say the hereafter, looks closer to us than the real world. Because the, the real world is through my own perception. And the hereafter, I look at it through Allah's description. So what do I give priority to? Do I give priority to my senses? Or do I give priority to the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the hereafter? And this is why Ali radiallahu anhu said, if now the veil of al-ghayb would be, if al-ghayb would be unveiled, I would not increase in yaqeen. He said, I would not increase. It's just seeing it with the eye. But I believe it. And this is why Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would turn the skies into iron and the soil into iron, I wouldn't doubt for a second that Allah would make it rain from an iron sky and let fruit sprout out from an, from an iron soul, uh, so, soil. You see? So in very brief, yani al-ghayb is just a name. And if other people are already in al ghayb with their minds. Okay. It means that you pray on time. It means that you don't skip prayers. It means that you don't join prayers without a valid reason, which you don't choose, but which the scholars will define for you. And with the correct wudu, with the correct khushur. So Imam al-Ghazali says, Iqamatu salah is the only salah, yani salah with presence of soul and mind and emotions, 100% throughout the prayer, is the only prayer will, which will, one will be rewarded for in the hereafter. He says, and our scholars have a consensus that a prayer without khushur will not be rewarded on the, in the hereafter. He says, Ijma' al-ulama. A prayer without khushu, yes, you tick the boxes. So you will not be punished, you have prayed. But, yani, you will not 
but you will not be rewarded for this. He said, بِإِجْمَاعِ الْعُلَمَاءِ So you can go against them, Imam Ghazali, if you like. So, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And then, read, وَالَّذِينَ Okay, so here there is something very nice going on. Anyway, it's, it's still showing us who they are. But then, يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ Look, there is a very big difference in أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ and أُنزِلَ عَلَيْكَ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the book and the verses, sometimes He says, بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ and sometimes he says alayk, ilayk and alayk. Ila is uh, yani, um, in your favor. And ala, it feels like a burden. Yani meaning that the Quran is ilayk wa alayk. Meaning that the Quran can sometimes be outwardly in your favor and sometimes in your what? Your disadvantage. When we say disadvantage, Quran is never in your disadvantage. But it means sometimes the Quran will tell you that you are wrong. Sometimes the Quran will tell you that you are the oppressor. Sometimes the Quran will tell you that you are the liar. Sometimes the Quran will say that you are the criminal, that you are the sinner, that you need to do tawbah, that you need to say sorry. So the haq is not always in your outwardly advantage. Sometimes it's also yani, against you, that you just need to step back. And you need to say, yes, I'm wrong. Why do you say I'm wrong? Not because of your emotions. You say it because of the haqq. So, bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila alayka are two different things. Alayka is restricting you and ilayka is liberating you. Is that clear? So, so that's the second meaning. Ilayka means it comes and it grants you freedom. Freedom from everything apart from Allah. And alayka, it restricts you with halal and haram. Is that clear? So this is what the meanings of ilayka wa alayka are. And this is exactly what al-qabd wa al-bast stands for. Al-qabd is when you feel that your chest is narrow, that you feel that worship is a bit heavy upon you, but you still do it. That's when you feel that the, that the, the, the Qur'an is alayk. You feel it as a kind of burden. It's when you have to pray and you don't feel like it, but you nevertheless walk. But that's a worship on its own. Sometimes feeling that it's difficult, yani might be, and still doing it, might be um, guiding through a bigger reward than doing it when you don't experience this. But because we have the lack of fiqh of this, that we think that we are bad Muslims whenever I feel that something feels heavy. We think it's only sins that do that. No, sometimes a worship feels heavy because we are human beings. Sometimes physically we are tired. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said that one of the things which Allah rewards most and which will elevate your sta status is وَإِسْبَاهُ الْوُضُوءِ عَلَى الْمَكَارِهِ Performing the wudu correctly عَلَى الْمَكَارِهِ When it's cold or during the night when you have to wake up for Fajr, you dislike it but you do it. So sometimes you feel that that which is ilayk, which should be liberating you from everything and freeing you from everything, you feel that it's imprisoning you. So sometimes even one thing can be ilayk or alayk. So here, bima unzila ilayk, it's still referring now to the book, ذلك الكتاب. But here, in, when at the beginning of the book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ilayk. Because ilayk shows that it's a mercy. Ilayk shows that it's a favor. Ilayk also means that it is the reason why he is honored and also that the previous prophets were promised that it would be a book which would be a blessing to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And this is why unzila ilayka has been, has been mentioned. Is that clear? Bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik. Naam, and, yani, and that which has been yani, revealed before you. Now, unzila, it didn't say nazzala, it didn't say nuzzila, did it? 
What is the difference between unzila and nuzila? Uh, so how are we going to understand this? Like unzila is in one go. And nazzala or nuzila is in more than one go. So how? It, didn't, it wasn't revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in one go. Yani it, is, it has been said, of course, that the Qur'an was revealed in one night to the sama. But it wasn't revealed in one go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him here that the entire book ya Muhammad is for you. The entire book, Muhammad والسلام, and he has been revealed and even though that you are facing problems, know that it is ilayk. And it is a mercy towards you and the end will be sweet. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليه وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ Now there is a thing here. When you look وَبِالْآخِرَةِ Isn't akhira a part of the ghayb? The akhira is a part of the ghayb, no? Ghayb was already mentioned, isn't it? مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ Isn't that ghayb either? Because unzila is referring to in the entire Qur'an and the entire Qur'an hasn't been, been revealed yet. Nam to Muhammad Do you agree? It has descended to Sama Dunya. So this is also Al Ghayb. Ma unzila min qablik, we don't see it. It's the Ghayb of the past. Wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun is once again about the Ghayb. And Alladina yu'minuna bil Ghayb is about the Ghayb. And when you pray, you pray to the one who is Ghaib, yani the one who you don't see. Ghaba an basarik. And when you give away in charity, you do this because you believe in an invisible kind of money. Hasanat. So from the beginning to the end, everything which has been said now is ghayb. So it's tangible, but everything is connected to al-ghayb. Meaning that the strength and the weakness of the Muslim in everything he does is connected to his strength or weakness in, in what? In al-ghayb. Is that clear? Everything you look at here is ghayb, isn't it? And then when Allah yani, finishes this here, He says, وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ There is yaqeen. Yaqeen, yani, there is no shek, there is no doubt whatsoever. There, yani, it doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. Yaqeen means that you are as sure of the akhirah as you are sure that you are alive for the moment. You know you are alive, otherwise you wouldn't be sitting here. You are as sure of the hereafter as you are that you are here. وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ So ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ نعم هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَى هُدًا آه. Once again they are what? Ala hudan, meaning in the beginning Allah said it's a hudan lil muttaqin. Remember? And now when He mentions all of these things, He says, and they whom have been described, they are on the path, on the guidance of their Lord. Meaning that when you live for your hereafter and you live your dunya because salah is a part of dunya, razatanahum is a part of dunya, but it's connected to the hereafter. When you live your life of this world, for the sake of the hereafter, you will definitely walk on the path of your Lord. Is that clear? So the message here is very clear. Like even though we are a ummah of this life where we work, where we get together, because the salah is a social thing, isn't it? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't once say, He said, Alladina, He said, Muttaqeen, Ula'ika, only with Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, He said, Ilayk. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين plural الذين يؤمنون بالغيب plural ويقيمون الصلاة plural ومما رزقناهم plural ينفقون والذين يؤمنون plural بما أنزل إليك لأنك فرد يا محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام because in another verse Allah سبحانه وتعالى says so that you would tell them what has been revealed to them by their Lord so the plural has been used in connection with something being revealed. But here it is even mentioning the previous prophets. 
بما أنزل وما أنزل من قبلك. Now it is referring to all the prophets. جمع again. But the only one who is mentioned as a fard, an individual, is Muhammad Ali Sallam. وما أنزل من قبلك. And what is beautiful here when we read. First, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malikum Deen, Iyaka Na'budu, Iyaka Na'stayin, Salat Al-Mustaqeem, Sirat Al-Lazeen, An'amta Alim, Ghayn Maghdubi Alayhim, Al-Dhaleen. There is no khitab individually, directly to the creation, is there? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malikum Deen, Iyaka Na'budu, Iyaka Na'stayin, We worship you and so forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't addressed anybody yet, directly. Being it, what? Yes, in the message, yes, but not like in the speech towards somebody. So the first one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ Those and them and the muttaqeen and not you muttaqeen. The first one he speaks to directly is the one who he has mentioned as an individual. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Like if you talk about taqwa, he's above that. Naam? Yani he is the leader of it. If you talk about salah, he is the leader of it. Yani he is it. He is the Qur'an yamshi ala al-ard. He is already the reflection of the Qur'an. So he doesn't need to be addressed now to do this here at this stage. The only thing is we mention that we have blessed him and we will address that to him and not to you. Naam? He didn't say, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ yani bima unzila ilayhi. Those who believe in what has been revealed upon him. Which would, in this context, between brackets, make sense. But it is ilayk. Is that clear? بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And once again, وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِينُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ They are. Yani all of this to show that Muhammad is special. Because it's أُولَٰئِكَ And them, and those. Naam? And then, then now it goes what? Ula'ika. And they are. After saying ilayk. Naam? They are. Ala huda min rabbihim. Wa ula'ika humul muflihun. And they are the muflihun. The muflihun. It's from the root letters. Falaha. Naam? And falaha. Yani in the Arabic language. Is. How do you call that? Agriculturer, do we say it like that? Farmer. farmer. Is a farmer. No? So a farmer is somebody is a fallah. No? That's a farmer. Why? Because a, a farmer, what does a farmer do? He does two things. One, sows. sows. And then he reaps. And then he cultivates. The only ones who cultivate are those who turn their life on the dunya to prepare themselves for the ghayb by sowing what? Deeds, hasanat, which they will cultivate in the hereafter. So we are all cultivators. Everybody has his or her piece of land. Yani, and every person you meet in your life is what? Someone in whom you can harvest hasanat or sayyat. That's it. Nothing here is not a piece of land. It is all a piece of land. What are you doing with it? So now, وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So now, if you want to harvest your hasanat in the hereafter, then one, respect the Qur'an. ذَلِكَ kitab. Don't doubt the Qur'an. Don't doubt that the Qur'an, what? Is a hudan lil mutaqeen. For know that the Quran is a guidance for you in each aspect of your life. And if you want to undertake something in your life which goes against Al Kitab, the message, the book on which everything else is built, don't do it. Have taqwa by doing what you have to do and leaving what you have to leave. And by leaving the doubtful so that you will understand the book of Allah. Walladhina yu'minuna and what was the next one? Walladhina yuqimuna salah. Uh, sorry. And those who truly believe in Al-Ghayb, they don't doubt it. They see the Ghayb clearer than the life they live in. Hold on to the Salah. Never forget that your money is not yours, it's Allah's. And that you spend the Zakat and give away in charity. 
Yani, and those who believe in that which has been descended as a blessing to you, O Muhammad Sallallahu And this verse then indicating that Rasulullah Sallallahu is special and that he has been addressed as the first person in the Quran. بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يقنون and they are sure of the hereafter أولئك على هدى من ربهم if you have these ten traits then you are on the guidance of your Lord and you will cultivate and يعني what you sow يعني in the hereafter بإذن الله عز وجل so this is يعني why these verses are so important نعم these verses are so important so how is this related to سورة الفاتحة you will only be able to do all of this one if you praise Allah. Alhamdulillah. If you know that the world you live in is not yours, it's from Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. That you know that you will have flaws and mistakes. So long for Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. And if you forget about all of that, remind yourself that He's Maliki Yawmiddin. That He is the one you will find in front of you on the Day of Judgment. And it won't be easy this path here. So you need to ask him for help and beg him for assistance. And then you say, Ihdina, remember Huda? Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. What is the Sirat al Mustaqim? Now Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, Sirat al Ladina and Amta alayhim, they are the ones who have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the other ones are not even when, worth being mentioned. Allah shows us that they are not even connected. They have no nisbah to Allah. They are not connected to Allah. And this is why he doesn't even say, not the ones whom Allah is angry with. No, those upon whom one is angry. He doesn't even connect his name to them. So you see that even there, yani he didn't what? Do this. So, Sirat al Amta alayhim, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ الْضَالِينَ Yani for this you are in need of knowledge and practice. So this is the way that Surah Al-Fatiha is connected to the five first verses of Surah Al-Baqarah and that's why you see that they put them separate. Like why wasn't the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah immediately like the rest of Surah Al-Baqarah? These five verses are separate and these five and, and the seven verses of Fatiha are separate as well because they are your vision. They are your way of life. They are your methodology. They are your constitution and your path. Everything you need and everything in the Quran returns back to the five verse verses of Baqarah and everything together with the five verse verses of Baqarah return to Surah Al-Fatiha. So that's in very brief. Yani some of the things, not all of the things, not even the most of the things that we can take away yani from the five verse verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. And uh, it's time. And that's it. Uh, time is up. Jazakumullah khairan, barakallahu fikum. And next time we will continue bi idnillah. We're going to try to do five verses at a time, every time. Okay? Inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala. Unless there is a connection which needs to be made with the sixth verse. But if not, then five per five per five, inshallah. Wa sallillahu wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa